Hey, kids, do you like wrestling? Well, we like wrestling, too. We are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Myself and Chris Novembrino kind of doing a lazy river of wrestling criticism, going through the news and whatever happened in stateside television wrestling. And also, you know what? Sometimes we just like to watch old stuff and talk about that, too. Love for you to give us a listen. If you haven't already, we are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody, welcome to the Super J Cast. I'm Joel, joined by David McDonald. It is Monday, 6th of November 2023. This is episode 280. Quite a quick turnaround from the last episode, but yeah. we felt it was important. We're burning, bursting with our hot takes. Just yeah. like just like the fireworks with fireworks night in the UK. Uh, we just we just had to record again, didn't we, Damon? Listen, we can't get enough of each other. That's really what it is. It's uh it's a love affair that goes deep. And we need to hear our voices. So uh, any excuse necessary. And uh, we just happened to have a show that was pretty controversial. So we can talk about that. I was just thinking earlier about this show. And there was uh, someone who wrote in with a message which basically summed up everything I thought about it. And... I've lost the message. No, oh, no. <laughs> that summed it up. <laughs> that, that, that's oh, no, no. I've got it. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. right. uh, William says, was that show 2023 New Japan in a nutshell? Really good match with a great young talent who doesn't get the big win to cement them as a start. Someone from AEW gets the big moment. Someone more established who isn't really connected comes out, and now there's a new title. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds pretty spot on to me. i got to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I guess we're getting into it, right? Let's get into it. You want to get it? I've got nothing. I mean, there's no news. There's no. I've got no pre-show banter. No. Now we're jumping nothing. right in. So all you fuckers looking for a laugh, <laughs> turn us off right now. <laughs> I don't know. You might get a laugh or two, but no pre-laughs. No. Uh, no foreplay here. We're jumping right in. No. I'm sticking it right in you. <laughs> <laughs> no move. We're just getting straight in. We're going right in. Oh, uh, cheese. Yep. Open them up. We're going in. Um, needless to say, I turned off this show, Joel, and I think I have more questions than I do answers. And yes. you are exactly right. Uh, reading off that comment in the sense of, I, I don't know what what we're doing. I don't know what we're doing. Um, well, I do know what we're doing. And... To me, it just feels like a huge, major misstep. And I don't know. What, what, what are you feeling? What do you like? What, seriously, from your gut, from your heart, fuck logic. How are you feeling right now about New Japan Pro Wrestling? After, through the main event, I was like, yes, this is what I love. This is why I watch this company. And then afterwards, I was like, this is why I hate this company. <laughs> it's just the way it just lurches from one extreme to the other. Like we were talking about last week, I was memeing about it, that <laughs> we're so back, it's so over. And we went from one end of that spectrum to the other in record time. Yeah. It, it was, I got whiplash, it went so fast. Sure, we had it in one match. <laughs> in one match, I felt that way. In one match, I'm on the edge of my seat. And I'm excited, and I'm and I and I can't wait for the bell to ring, and um, you know, I'm I'm into every near fall, and I'm into every big move, and you know, you're you're in the middle of it, and, you, and you're getting past a certain mark, time wise, and you're thinking, okay, they this this might be it, this this might be the beginning of a of this and and the start of. Of, of, of something special, right? And um, then it went from just knowing that 
the guy that is geared to be the next guy is in the ring with the guy that is the guy who is moving on. Uh, and you and you had hope, and you and you felt good, and you really thought, okay, we're we might be in a good spot here. And even with everything on the undercard too, uh, and again, I'm, I'm talking about a lot of the, the the younger talent. You know, everything felt like okay. You know, we're we're ready. We're ready for you to make the move whenever you are New Japan. And then in a 10, 15 minute span, I feel like most of that goodwill, <laughs> pardon the pun, um, was just evaporated. And it was, ah, gotcha. No, or better yet, you got me. You got me. <laughs> got me again. You got me again. Uh, I, f- I fell for it again. Because you guys have no intentions of of getting there anytime soon. I think eventually we will get there. But the opportunity to turn someone and put the rocket on them and all that with a guy who is leaving, a guy who is not going to be here, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought it was just pro wrestling 101. And – we can't get that right. And now we have a Wrestle Kingdom match that literally no one asked for. Well, I'm going to save thoughts of that. Let's just work through the show chronologically okay. and build up some anticipation. Okay. For this. First of all, I'd like to talk about the English commentary. Oh. So this was the first... No, it wasn't the first anything for Walker Stewart, was it? Because he's done. Was it? No, his first. No, it wasn't his first live show in Japan. Whatever. This is the the, <laughs> the most high profile show. First Walker tour. Stewart has first done. tour. Yes. Yeah. First, yeah, first sure. time in Osaka. <laughs> no, it wasn't because he did the. Oh yeah, you're right. Super Junior Tag League Finals. So yeah, right. I don't know how to articulate this occasion, but Walker Stewart did it. And look, I know he's only 21, and I like him. I think he's got great attitudes. Um, I think he's saying all the right things, but I do have you know, responsibility doing this podcast to be completely honest and say for everything, for commentary, for wrestlers, what I think is working well, what I think is not working well. Yep. I thought Walker was great. Really, really fantastic. With, with all those caveats I said, as we've mentioned before, just really the, the fundamentals are there. I just like the sound of his voice fundamentally. I think he's got a great voice for play by play. The, Fundamentals is there, all the basics, very professional sounding. Just sounds like a sports announcer. Yeah. There's definitely room for growth, and he would be the first person to acknowledge that. He does need to improve his knowledge and understanding of the product and the history and the backstory. There's no shortcuts to that. It's not something I was expecting him to do overnight or before or in time for this show. That's a journey he's going on. That's going to take time. Also, having some extra gears to to go up to when matches reach a crescendo. And that's tricky to do. Like, that's really tough to do for someone with a voice with the the tenor that his has, you know, with very deep voice like that. It's really, really difficult to do that. But he will do it. You know, that's something he's got to work on, something he will train, hopefully. And I will say it was a particularly challenging match to do that because I thought they were about you know, four or five times where I thought, okay, they're taking it home now. This is it. This is the end of the match. But they just, they kept on going and kept reaching new peaks. So uh, definitely not an easy match to be calling. So I think those are the things that he needs to improve. But I'd say everything else is there. And like I said, with his attitude towards the gig and his the, the time being on his side, he is absolutely going to get that. I don't, I don't have any concerns. And I was worried when Kevin Kelly was uh, calling it a day with New Japan, but I'm not worried anymore. Um, however, I would say my biggest issues with the commentary were not about those areas of growth that I've outlined, outlined for Walker Stewart. It was the dynamics of the, the dynamics with the other people in the booth, let's say. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a play-by-play announcer and there is a colour commentator. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were three guys <laughs> towards the end of the show, but... There are uh, specific roles for both. And I felt that at parts during the show, those roles were not necessarily adhered to, shall I say. I think there were parts where 
the colour commentary should have been supporting and enhancing and boosting and, dare I say, protecting the play-by-play, given that this is a relatively new job for Walker Stewart. Um, I didn't feel it did that. I felt people were not really staying in their lanes, David. Okay. I, I mean, I hear you and I'm with you, right? And I'm with you. Uh, let me rewind first. And uh, it, all the things that you had talked about with when it comes to inflections and stuff like that, I think that will come the more he gets comfortable in the role, right? Uh, again, let's 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 just bear this in mind. And I know he has a job to do. And again, he would be the first to to admit that you know he's not there on vacation. That being said, uh, this is his first trip here. Here being Japan. Um, and I don't care what anybody says. There is just bewilderment and deer in headlights and all of that. And he's working for a promotion that he knows people are going to be very critical uh, and kind of stay on every one of his words. Right? He knows it. He's aware of it. Fine. I thought he did great. I thought he did great. Yes, he has a southern U.S.ness about him um, that is, you know what? We're going to have some barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to get out the smoker. We're going to make some brisket, and we're going to sit here and drink for 12 hours and maybe play a couple of rounds of fucking horseshoes. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, he's got that. And that, to me, is comforting. Like, that voice can be very comforting. Um, so he's got that down. Like, well, I'm not worried about that. Um, and all of that will, you know, the more he does it, the the more I think we'll see him get comfortable. But I thought, you know, for the, his first, uh, you know, shots at this, I got no problems. Um, and I got no real critiques. Um, the idea of Chris kind of what felt like look I'm, uh, it, yeah I'm sure there's no heat right let's 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 get that out of the way first because I saw all that and that's preposterous there is no heat um but I did like there were just little comments that were just like okay woo, you're kind of throwing them under the bus a little bit but I'm all right and maybe just maybe and again, I, I think a, a simple conversation with Chris would would solve this on our end. You know, to, if, if he want if he was willing to give us that time, um, and give us fight TV guys, <laughs> give us yeah, give us some fucking uh, passive. Um, is um, maybe he felt that he needed to be that guy to to m- maybe. Cross that that imaginary line of between color commentator and play by play guy, just to help Walker across the finish line, right? I don't expect to hear that in the, in the near future, right? But a little bit of hand holding, I think, you know, if I'm Chris, I probably w- might feel that way. That okay, this is a big show, you know, this is a his first time behind the mic in a big show. And, you know, maybe maybe I'm going to say some things that maybe I, I wouldn't have um, just to help him in, in the process. Um, that's what I'm going to take it. Now, if we still have this conversation three months from now, uh, yeah, we got a different fucking problem on our hands. But I don't think that's the case. Um, and as as weird as this may sound, I thought it got better when Robbie Eagles showed up. Like, I think Robbie Eagles provided what I wished I would hear more from Chris Charlton. Right. And it's impossible for Chris Charlton because he's not in the ring. Right. So he, it's hard for him to give that perspective. He absolutely. He is a dad, though. What's that? He is a dad. He <laughs> provides that unique commentary perspective that only fathers can. That's true. That's true. And he's incredibly short, so like elves and stuff. <laughs> like <he> could... <laughs> no, you can't do that. Okay, that was wrong. You know what? Make you can make fun of me on commentary, Gary, if you want, Chris. You can call me a fucking fat ass or whatever. I don't care. That's fair. Um, 
the um I think you know like I said I think I think that will iron itself out. I really do. I hope so. Um but aside from that, no, I thought I thought they were I thought they did well and Robbie like I said adding that element of the guy in the ring like he didn't insult your intelligence uh and he brought up really great points as if pro wrestling were a real thing, right? And I kind of appreciate that to be able to walk that line. And I thought he did an awesome job doing that. So he, I think he added a, a, a flavor that has been missing for a little bit when it comes to New Japan Pro Wrestling commentating. Um, again, you have the historical stuff. Chris does an excellent job of. You have the play-by-play person, Kevin and now Walker. Um, and then you kind of throw in Robbie in there. And, you know, he's the guy in the ring. And he can kind of give you that. You might not get this reference, but he's going to give you that Tony Romo kind of thing of, okay, I used to play this sport for fucking 12 years or however long uh, in, in big time games. And here's what the defense is looking at. And here's what the offense is looking at. And this is probably the play they're going to call. And there it is. <laughs> there's, there's the play. Um, so, yes, I think, I think everyone, I think everyone had high hopes. And I think for the most part, I think a lot of people are on board and again, we're just hoping for improvement, and I think we'll get that. Yeah, definitely good signs for for the future there. It's just, it's just the old sort of pro wrestling adage of you accentuate the strengths and hide the weaknesses. So a bit yes. more of that, and uh, we'll be f- off to the races. Um, okay, so the first match was the Frontier Zone, where Oleg Boltin, DKC, and Taguchi defeat the Dragon Gate trio of Mochizuki Jr., Yoshiki Kato, Kato, I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry, and Strong Machine J, and Taguchi pinned Mochizuki Jun. I thought he was like the, the the hottest young Dragon Gate prospect, although that's always a slippery slope. If you speak to a Dragon, Dragon Gate fan, everyone on the fucking card is the, 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 the saviour of pro wrestling. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I want to take away from this, um, Oleg Bolton, Needs more monster. He needs more monster. He's a bit too gentle and calm, like a sort of a friendly bear. In his backstage promos, he's just doing the, oh, you know, I just try my best. I'm going to work hard, do 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 the best that I can. I hope that everyone has a lovely time. Want more of him sort of suplexing people out of their boots, please. But um, hopefully that'll come. Yeah, I think that will. I think I, I I think they don't even know what they have. To be honest, I don't. I don't even think they. The company has an idea of how they want to package him and how they want him to present himself. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the the no brainer would be yeah, have him fucking just tossing people around a ring um, and stretching people out and uh, you know just being a bad son of a bitch. That would be the ideal, and um, yeah, I think that would come. But I think like you know, being a young lion, he's gonna. You know, just put on that modest face and not try and stand out too much, which again, we're going back to years and years of tradition when it comes to that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, he's he's going to be awesome. Hopefully, hopefully if he sticks around, that's, that's uh, you know, who knows? But not that I know anything uh, otherwise, but you know, you just, you never know the percentage of young lions that, that make it through. Um, you know. There are people that don't. So we all are hoping that he is one of those people that make it through and, uh, yes, suplexes people out of their fucking boots. The first match was Jeff Cobb and Callum Newman defeating Oscar Loiber and Yuto Nakashima. Four minutes, 41 seconds. Cobb pinned Oscar following the tour of the islands. Um, there's been a lot of talk from Loiber and Nakashima, young bloods, as they've um, labeled themselves, that they would like to be in World Tag League. This certainly wasn't a good omen for that. I don't know if this is just guys saying shit as often they do in New Japan backstage comments, but you know, even if they do just enter world tag league to be, you know, go like, Oh, and 15 or, or whatever, I'd be open to that. You know, it just, I want to see the young talent put in high profile spots. That's what I want in New Japan. Uh, Jeff Cobb for his part is asking for bookings on Twitter. You know, he's saying <sighs> that he'd like to more dates in the U S blah, 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 blah. I, so I would not be holding my breath, for him in World Tag League, as much as I enjoyed the Khan on the Cobb team, 
I understand that it's a more cost efficient booking for New Japan to go with Holy Seaman Army with Hinara and Okan, two guys who live in Japan rather than flying uh, Jeff over for a tournament that they're not likely to win. But uh, do have my fears about Jeff Cobb. You know, it could just be working, but if you were to put the Super Jekyll's gun to my head and say, is this guy going to be still with New Japan in six months' time? I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't give you a definitive yes there. I tell you what, working that match, you felt like, I don't know, did you get, this guy doesn't give a shit about what's happening here. <laughs> Vibes. Like, like he was like, like you could tell, at least it felt like it anyway. He was a guy that just kind of didn't want to be there in the opening match. Uh, you know, did his spot, squashed who he needed to squash. Uh yeah, um, look, I I said it oh, a couple months ago that I don't think people realized the the gravity of post Wrestle Kingdom. I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff Cobb is on that list. I would not be surprised. Um, and if he's out there on Twitter looking for bookings, that's never a good sign, right? <laughs> that's never a good sign. So, uh, yeah, I get it, cost savings and all that fucking shit. But you got yourself a stud, and he's looking for work. That never turns out well. <laughs> never turns out well. So I mean, I, I said again, I should reiterate, we've had people toeing this line before. We've had Yuya yeah. asking for bookings, and it's okay. to be. But there's well, a big the difference fans. between so maybe Yuya. Jeff's doing that, but. Yeah, there's a big difference between Yuya and and Jeff Cobb, right? There's a big difference. Jeff Cobb is arguably a upper mid card guy, maybe a mid card guy. But I I kind of think of him as an upper mid card guy. And it's a little bit different than a young lion looking for fucking bookings on excursion, don't you think? Uh, no, I mean, my point was that Yuya was lying. He was doing it to oh. deliberately mislead people. So it could be Jeff is doing the same and that he has actually got some enormous uh, future and angle and faction leadership <laughs> booked in for New Japan. But uh, Okay, but yeah, if, okay, okay, uh, let me just say this, though. If that's the case, then why, are, why would anybody work people at this point? You know what I mean? Like, to me, that's just so fucking dumb. <laughs> like, like, why would you work somebody like that? It's just uh, pro wrestling is so stupid sometimes. Like, come on, you want me to take you seriously, and you and you know, and, you, and then you just treat your fucking fan base like that. Is like, okay, again, I'm not saying he is, but like, if he were, it's just like, why are you doing this, dude? What's the point? Like, what? Like, are you making money doing that? I don't know. Like, nobody's going to be like, oh my god, Jeff Cobb just showed up. Absolutely no one. <laughs> you know? I feel like Juice Robinson did it quite effectively, and now everyone's trying to copy that. Even though that it wasn't some like massive sort of right. money making uh, angle that did Juice's big heel turn that shocked everyone after he'd worked. Everyone didn't really matter too much, did it? No, the uh, rock really. hard gimmick. Hmm. Not really. Not really. All right, so. Jeff Cobb wins opening match, and I don't think there was any shock there. All right, what was number two again? Number two was the uh, junior special four-way tag match where we had El Desperado and Master Watto defeating Clark Connors and Driller Maloney, Yo and Musashi and Robbie Eagles and Kosei Fujita. So it was Despi pinning Fujita after five minutes, 36 seconds, Will El Esclero. I thought this match might be a Trojan horse for getting a Wrestle Kingdom three-way for those junior tag titles but uh no it's not so the junior tag match for wrestle kingdom is official it is catch 2-2 against war dogs which you know we will get onto that so this match was just i don't know what it was for just a a, a swan song for despa Watto, perhaps they acknowledged backstage they were just like okay that's it thanks thanks for team with me it's been fun bye which yeah. was a bit strange yeah. i thought there might be uh, a bigger narrative dramatic climax to that so that was a bit disappointing. Um, Can I yeah, fantasy book? Really sure what to make of that. Can I fantasy yeah. book something? What would you think of, say, a little little interference 
in Despi and Hiromo at the Dome from one freshly turned Master Wato. Uh, no, okay. I don't think I would like that. I think I'm comfortable, and I think Wato is comfortable with his spot at the moment. I dork. think he's kind of... He's comfortable with dork. Yeah, I think, okay. no, I think he's comfortable with the dorkiness, and I think he's sort of leaned into that and is sort of got a, an endearing goofiness about him, but people, I think, take him seriously now. I think you have to, after the year that he's had, the best of the Super Juniors win. I thought it was outstanding in that, so... Um, I don't think it will be a good fit for him. I don't think he could pull it off, really, being a heel. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it would expand his horizons a little bit. Um, get that much-needed sandpaper that I always talk about. Eh, it was a thought. I don't know. It just seemed. It did seem weird that it was just like, okay, you know, here's your T-shirt. All right, I'm going to reluctantly shake your hand. Okay, that's it. You know what I mean? Like, it just felt like, look okay, at this is yeah. where it ends. Okay. Yeah, it could be. You could be right. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just thought, you know, I don't know. Like, what was the point? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, all right, what was the point of this again? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. And it just, just it did seem like um, this was very Orndorff Hogan esque, <laughs> you know, of the constant going back and forth of, okay, I'll be your friend and all that stuff. Um, you know, all condensed into like a month span. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you do at Watto at this point. It's uh, it seem I, I feel that while he did have a lot of momentum, I, I mean, I don't know. Is he still? He's still in that echelon for you. He's he's still up there. Is this it? is it? Like it's just flagging now. What is one of my bigger concerns heading oh. towards Wrestle Kingdom is that all these guys these young, talented guys who've really made a name for themselves this year, nothing for Wrestle Kingdom. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. I mean, granted, we do have, uh, we have what, two months? So I'm sure things will change, but yeah. Yeah, you would think that they would be showcased and they would be front and center, but, uh, you know, we still got a little bit of time to get some creative juices flowing for them, but... Yeah, it's just a little bit disappointing. Um, again, I, look, I, I I don't know what kind of ticket sales you're going to get from them, right? If you put them at the top, I, I don't know. But, you know, obviously they, they feel that it's the juice isn't worth the squeeze with them right now. You know, right now. And again, we do have time and all that fucking shit, blah, 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 blah. But, um, it, yeah, it, it just... It is odd to me that, yeah, none of them, none of them have a spot yet. So we'll see. Then we have the third batch, which was Tamatonga, Kushida, and Kevin Knight defeating Shingo Takagi, Titan, and Bushi. So Tamatonga pinned Bushi after 10 minutes, 55 seconds with a gun stun. And it appears that he is challenging Shingo <laughs> again for the Never title, <laughs> which, again, that's that's the first big red flag of the show. I yeah. was like, what? What the, what is going on here? Now, I've heard rumors about Shingo and Wrestle Kingdom that there was maybe some talk about him defending that title against um, Kazuhiko Nakajima. I don't know if that is likely to happen now, given that Nakajima has, uh, let's say, I don't want to spoil stuff, but commitments and other companies, shall we say. And to be honest, like we saw that Shingo versus Nakajima match earlier this year. I didn't think it was that great. So it's not something I was desperate to see again. What I did not want to see again, though, was uh, Tamatonga versus Shingo. I hope this is a placeholder until they come up with something better. I mean, it seemed that we were maybe trending towards Shingo versus Evil, maybe some sort of hair versus hair gimmick. Maybe I'm a lunatic on Lunatic Island. I think I might rather see that than see Shingo versus Tamatonga again. But I digress. Here is, the, again, red flag for the booking of this company that we are getting interminable pushes from guys who don't I, don't, I don't think deserve it that much. I don't do, Can we, can we sort of down cycle Tamatonga a bit, please? We've I just, just hit a I ceiling. Look, That's enough. Yeah. Can you name another guy who's gotten more opportunities? <laughs> I, I can't. It's been forever with this guy. And it's like, okay, 
we're gonna get we're gonna do the rematch of the rematch of the rematch. It's this is the point that uh, I, was, I was chatting to Fraser and he brought up this really good point, which is that I think in terms of booking of the the domestic talent, not a lot has changed really. But the, one of the bigger changes that's quite jarring now is that in previous years, in terms of the foreign talent, they basically had their pick of the indies, like the best workers on the planet. This is in the pre AEW world, but now. It feels like I don't want to use the word dregs, but when we're looking at guys like Tamatonga constantly being pushed and, and elevated in, in high profile singles title picture, then you know that's not at the, the quality that it was five years ago. I think they're loyal to a, a fault. You know, they're loyal to a fault. Um, I look. Who knows if. WWE had interest, you know, that could just been a bit of bargaining line to throw out there to say, you know, just to kind of raise the stock a little bit. But like a guy like Tamatanga is going, always going to have a job. Like they'll never fire him unless he commits a fucking felony. You know, um, it's, it's just, they, they just don't. Now, if you're, you know, Western, uh, or, you know, non-Japanese, shall I say. Uh, yeah, there's a... Let me take that back as well, because obviously Tamatanga is not Japanese. Um, if you aren't a person who has been born and bred through the do- dojo system um, and have been through, you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling for a significant amount of time, you you, you have a job for life. You'll never, never not. Um, but yeah, it's look to me, they still have one of the most talented rosters in pro wrestling still do. It's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like they just, they don't stop. (laughs) You know what I mean? They just, they have a, they have a vision, whatever this vision is. For Tamatanga, they're not stopping. It is continuing on and on and on until either he doesn't show up for a fucking plane or or he signs somewhere else. Because New Japan, obviously, he's not going to do anything. We'll keep him. Um, An incredible turnaround from a guy who was attacking fans during the 2018 G1 yeah. Climax and looked like he was a whisker away from getting the sack. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, well, okay. Well, I mean, obviously that was under different management, and apparently he was fined. But yeah, I mean, it's it is it is comical how they just stick with the same guns. It's I don't know. It's he's you know he's not terrible. It's just he's there, and I think everyone's waiting for that next level, and that next level is not there. Can we just finally fucking admit it? It's just not there. Um, and yet, here he is still in the mix. Here he is still in the mix. I'll tell you, either this fucking Wrestle Kingdom, Joel, is going to be seven hours long, or there are going to be some upset people. There are going to be some upset well, people. Well, they moved it back half an hour because apparently they had too many matches to cram in. So it's a 4.30 start instead of 5. Mm. Okay. I mean, look, it's they got a lot of they got, they got a lot of people that uh, are are looking for a match on a, on the biggest show of the year that have that have stuck it out, and there's no guarantee that they're going to be in not only a marquee match but a, you know, a match. And when you have situations like this where it's Tamatanga once again, and again, this could happen bef- very well happened before Wrestle Kingdom. But that being said, I mean, I would not be surprised if it if it's there. Never title Shingo and Tamatanga, and uh, I'm I could couldn't care less. Yeah, close on to that. Um, in terms of World Tag League, they did seem to be heavily hinting that Shingo and Suji would be teaming up for World Tag League, which makes me wonder if this Shingo never title win is a relatively last minute pivot 
So Shingo addressed that and said, basically, it's all up to the company. Uh, he said he's more interested in being a singles guy. So they've not really closed the door on that yet, but convention suggests that he would not be taking part if he's still holding a New Japan singles title. So there you go. I'm not holding my breath for Shingo versus Suji in World Tag League, even though that would be great and it is what they should do. Uh, fourth match then. Tetsuya Naito and Yota Suji defeated Sanada and Yuya Uemura. 11 minutes, 10 seconds. Suji pinning Yuya following the Gene Blaster. Uh, there's quite a lot to unpack from this one. First of all, Good. I hate to open up this can of worms again, but from what I heard on the broadcast and from people I know who were in the building, no reaction for Sanada. This is your Wrestle Kingdom main event program, right? Feels like Naito is pulling teeth, trying to get something compelling out of Sanada. I don't know if Naito believes that Sanada is capable of delivering that, to be honest. And uh, Booz helpfully reminded me, I don't know if you'll remember back when Ibushi was defending his title against Sanada and felt that Sanada was giving him so little that he just ended up, Ibushi ended up inserting himself into other people's backstage promos just to give himself <laughs> something to do. Uh, so, yeah, again, I don't want to relitigate this whole thing, but it's it's a cold program, right? There's no no getting around oh, that. Cold. Uh, yeah, uh, Naito is going to be having eye surgery. Apparently, this is the last time he can have this particular procedure. So, just a little bit of fear in your hearts there that maybe Naito is not going to win at Wrestle Kingdom if he's not yeah. able, if he you know doesn't have the longevity to be able to have a, a decent reign as champion. So, just to Shit everyone boy, up a little boy. bit. <laughs> this fuck, what a doom and gloom podcast this has become. <laughs> My goodness gracious. <laughs> Let, let's talk about you, Emra, who I've got yeah. egg on my face. I was convinced he was going to be the second coming. And dare I say, looking like a little bit of a job here. Mm. He looked good, though. I, I, I think, like, to me, out of everybody in the ring, he look like a fucking stud like that the, the whole everything i think he's just got it um yep and he's the one looking at the lights um and again uh, you can make an argument all right Th- this is what i don't understand there is absolutely nothing wrong let me repeat this nothing wrong with sonata taking a pinfall and it could be slip on a banana peel. It could be, you know, fucking hijinks. It could be whatever. There's nothing wrong with Naito pinning Sonata to get people amped up to say, oh, okay, he can fucking beat him. He, he beat him here, you know? Uh, you know, this, this, we got a good shot of this fucking title changing hands. Um, I, and I would think that would be something that they would like kind of push toward and lean on to get some juice into this fucking program. Yeah. They have the guy who probably in the ring, arguably one or one a needed that pinfall more than any of them. Uh, he's the one looking at the fucking lights. Um, Sonata and, and Naito might be, and I'm really struggling to think back. It might be the most, freezing cold wrestle kingdom main event that i can ever remember like i i remember feeling this way like around the 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 the, and this was i guess it was was it the first wrestle kingdom where it was uh the tna involvement you had just you know you know aces and eights and all you know all that stuff dudley's all everything um jeff hardy I, that's this is what I feel going into this Wrestle Kingdom, and truth be told, I might have been even a little bit more exciting excited for the one past than th- this main event. I I can't think of hey, how is that possible? How, we all, uh, rightly shout on Jay White for just doing absolutely nothing to build up hype, which mm-hmm. was maybe a little bit understandable because he had one foot out the door. How has this build managed to be even worse than that? I don't know. I don't know. You got a guy in 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 Naito who 
I mean, that's his gimmick to not give a shit. Okay, great. But it doesn't help. <laughs> it really doesn't help any. Uh, and Sonata, who, look, you said it, and we've heard it from multiple people. So please stop with the, oh, but he's over in Japan. Is he? Is Sonata over in Japan? Because they're like at, at, at least now with the title, it seems like he is quite possibly the the IWGP World Champion with the just you you just needed to frost him. <laughs> it, it's that cold. It's just a block of fucking ice. Um, and that's preposterous because. It's not like we're sitting here and we had no time to be creative or think, okay, what can we do to jumpstart things and what, what's going to help us move forward and what's going to help us put a little bit more revenue in our pockets so that we can bring in Jeff Cobb for world tag league. (laughs) You know what I mean? They shit the bed post COVID. I cannot believe how much they fucked up post COVID. And even before you kind of felt the, the, the signs. Look, no one, absolutely no one asked for a the Intercontinental Belt to be dissolved into the world title. And now three people are going to fight for it on two separate Wrestle Kingdoms. <sighs> I was going to save this that, in retrospect. Like that is that is the most ludicrous thing that they might right. have ever done. Right, that decision to merge those two titles and be in the right. lineage of both of them is so, fucking right. insane. Insane, insane. The one thing this company had over every single pro wrestling company was that fucking title. Sorry, that's what drew people in. It was the battle for the top prize in pro wrestling. And I know that sounds cliche, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but that is the God's honest fucking truth. And now we have 75 titles that don't mean shit. It's unbelievable. I was going to say this for the appropriate time, but now is the appropriate time. At... 42 minutes into this particular podcast, Damon McDonald is going to propose we need a change at the top. We need it now. The time is done. I've had enough. Yes. I'm going to do Arsenal fan TV memes. It's time to go. (laughs) It's time to go. Like, we need fresh ideas. We need fresh leadership. The, 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 what we have right now is A, not getting the job done, and B, making things proactively worse. I, 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 I can't believe I would say this, but every booker has a shelf life. And you just run out of fucking ideas. And you know what? Every head coach, championship teams, championships, head coaches overstay their welcome. General managers overstay their welcomes. It's sports. It's what happens. And guess what? In a, in a profession where not only do you need to be able to see talent and and be able to hone talent, you need to be creative and give them a direction. That's not happening. I want everyone to just pause for a second and think about it. What we have at Wrestle Kingdom is 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 it's not where it needs to be. Where we have 75 titles that mean nothing. Where we're actually t- considering merging another set. <laughs> First of all, The title is the U.S. Intercontinental title or what U.S. IWGP U.S. Championship. Okay. And the U.S., the, the U.K. thing 
was just a thing, right? It was just a saying. It was just a thing where Big Will was like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to show. I represent. And then it became a belt. <laughs> like, it became the actual physical belt. Like, <laughs> what are we doing? And now we're merging the imaginary belt and the actual title. And the title that actually probably the only title that has any type of, of energy behind it. Now we're going to create a new title. I'm over it. It's I'm done with it. Enough with the new titles. It's bullshit. I'm sick of it. We, you're, it's, it's, uh, we, need, we need a change. We are stale as fuck from top to bottom, yet we have uh, – this is the problem in a nutshell, Joel. We have arguably the best roster in pro wrestling. I would put this New Japan roster against any roster currently in pro wrestling. We have a great roster. The problem is, is that the talent is not – being used properly, period, period. And that's the booking. And quite honestly, that is the, the absolute brain dead decisions up top from all these U S shows to terrible promoting of the shows to literally killing cities in which you had lines around the block lines around the block to get in. Joel, that, that 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 those days are long gone. We still don't have a TV deal. We're on access. Do, do you know we're on access TV in the states? <laughs> does anybody does anybody watch it? Does anybody? See? I've never watched it. How do you like that? I've never watched it. Still don't have a TV deal. We still can't fill an arena. We still rely on AEW. We still, to this day, are treated like a bastard stepchild by him. We are lost. <laughs> We're lost. And it ain't going to change until there's a, a major shakeup. And I am here for it. Top to bottom. That means Japan. And that means US. And if the next person that sits on that throne and uh, is in charge of New Japan Pro Wrestling, and they don't have a clear, definitive path of A, this person's my booker, and B, here are our plans in the next year for not only here, but in the States. I would have no problem with them saying, well, you know what? We're putting it on hold. We're not going to run another show in the U.S. I'm not going to do it. Why? Why would we? Why? why? I, until they fucking figure it out. I'm off my soapbox. Thank you. Nick Kikuchi back. I'm not even joking. Look, we actually do. We actually do. <laughs> I mean, we actually do. And, here, and, and the thing about it is, is that, you know, if at the time when we were told about him, trust me, we couldn't believe it. You know, we were just like, what? Really? And it was confirmed from multiples, multiple people. But it was something that like, it was literally, if you tell anyone, you're going to get, we're going to kill you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you're going to get a bullet in your head in the middle of the night. Um Yes. Yeah. We we need here's the thing. We need something. We we need something. Um and 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 please don't take this as I don't appreciate where we were, but it's time for a change. We need we need new ideas and fresh ideas and a a, a game plan for these youngsters and let's let's jump start it cuz we're wasting time. Yeah, I mean cycling back to this match, I think this is case in point really that we've got Guys like you, Onra, and Yota Suji with nothing on the table for Wrestle Kingdom. And that's the classic New Japan book in that they are very conservative when it comes to the young talent and they build them up and tell these stories as we're going to get on to with Shota Umino. But I just don't think they've got the luxury of doing that because yeah. what they have at the top of the cards and then the upper mid card is just not compelling at all. Guys like Sanada, David Finley, Tamatonka, you can't. I don't. I, again, I don't think you can do that. It's not like, you know, you got Prime Okada and Naito and Tanahashi and Kenny Omega and Jay White, etc., being able to be the the star attractions at the top of the card while we take our time with the younger talent. 
it's, it's not the case. And I know that the pushes for Uemras and Yasujis will come probably next year, but it's just it's very difficult to watch looking at this extremely stodgy Wrestle Kingdom card with a lot of old guys, a lot of injured guys filling out the card. You know, we know Sonata's not 100%. Naito's undergoing eye surgery. Brian Danielson's got his orbital injury. He's not allowed to wrestle. Despy's undergoing surgery. Goto's still injured. And there's probably more examples. But uh, weirdly, the tickets are selling really well. Yeah. The Arena A is sold out. So they might be heading towards a 40,000 capacity Wrestle Kingdom here, which might make us look like twats. Wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. But again, I don't think them doing a good number at Wrestle Kingdom makes anything that we've said invalid. Because at the end of the day, we're watching something because we want it to be creatively fulfilling. Because if it's like, well, look at the attendances, then congratulations, you're a WWE fan. Right. I don't want to play that game. Right. So whilst I do acknowledge that the tickets are moving well, and you know there might be a lot of factors for that, I just I'm finding it very frustrating seeing them sitting on this gold mine, what I think is a gold mine of talent, and not really doing much with them. Well, they the put the gun to people's heads, you know, with the ticket sales. You know, I mean, nothing was announced, and you know, tickets you know go on sale, and you're assuming you're going to see greatness, and a lot of that just has to do with the fact that you're in the dome and. I think, uh, you know, opening up the borders once again, that's that's people are excited to get back. And and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of first timers. Um, nothing wrong with that. You know, it's it's a wonderful country and a wonderful place to go on holiday. Absolutely. Um, and a great time of year and a great time of year. But, yeah, I mean, we're, we're kidding ourselves if, if we're going to sit here and say that it, this is this is. Where this is where we thought we would be when we sat through empty arenas and clap crowds, and we were the last ones to to get cheering fans back, and we went and we bit the bullet. The problem is this: people will not wait for you, New Japan. They're not going to wait for you, like in 1991. Yep, we would wait because what other fucking options do we have, right? The world is a bit different now, and people are not going to wait. Um, Yes, tickets got sold. Yes, you know, but there's only so much goodwill people have, man. And, and, And to be brutally honest, people going for Wrestle Kingdom, I would say... You know, I, I'm going to speak for me. I can't speak for everybody else. I'm going to speak for me. But honestly, the actual Wrestle Kingdom is probably third or fourth on my list of, oh, I can't wait to get over to Japan. Because honestly, it's outside the dome that is probably 10 times more fun than, than in the actual dome uh, inside that cavernous building that you really can't see shit in. Um. I, they got to figure it out, dude. They just got to figure it out. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I've got the energy to discuss you. Yeah? I just feel Look, his, he, I, I he's think he looks great. Really disappointing. It is disappointing. He looks great, but the, it's just really, it's a Sonata's young boy. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Am I out of my mind thinking that we need a change? No. I I think it's time, man. I, th- I actually I think it's we're well past that time. Yeah. I th- I think we've given so much rope. It's unbelievable. Um and this is not a knock on any of the participants in the ring. Cuz everybody's working their ass off. I th- I I feel that. Uh, I don't think necessarily a lot of people are dogging it. I mean, you know, your usual suspects. <laughs> but, you know, for the most part, you know, we're they're working their fucking tails off. It's just we need a change. We need a fucking change at the top. And not only do we need a change, we need, we need direction. We need we need we need direction. Uh Suji says he wants to be in World Tag League, but 
I guess it's all hinges on Shingo. Shingo's not taking part, then Suji's going to need a different partner. No idea who that could be, but yeah, again, just very directionless. Um, B. Francis, who started that I'm not taking my T-shirt off at this undercard match trend. <laughs> so you should call that being... <laughs> <laughs> I remember T-shirt Kenny being a thing in sort of 2017, 2018, and you know, Naito's always been like that. Anyway, let's move on to fifth match. Uh, David Finley or unfit Finley as uh, Ash says in our Discord uh, defeating Tagalo at 12 minutes 33 seconds via into into oblivion do you remember when David Finley sort of re-debuted this Bullet Club leader gimmick and yep. it was quite distinct from Jay White because he was winning matches clean and just being really a, a savage as he said just being absolutely brutal getting clean wins but just basically beating the shit out of people not able to beat Tangelo cleanly here. Mm. Needed the, uh, was it a distraction, ref bump, shillelagh, whatever it was. There just seems to be a distinct change in the way he's been presented. And he's not looking in good shape either. I'm not a big body pervert. Pick a lane, right? If you want to be a fat bullet club leader, go for it. You know, go full Hashimoto or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you're going to be fat, be fat. Don't be this sort of middle ground. I think... I don't know. As soon as he found out he was going to be Bullet Club leader, he should have been straight on the juice, phoning up Jay White. Oh, Jay, geez. Who, who does your roids? Get, hook me up, Get on please. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, he just did, did not look in good shape here. I mean, the match was all right. I mean, I don't know if this is a hot take. I actually thought Tangelo was probably performed better in this match than Finley did, but it wasn't offensively bad or anything. It's just... It wasn't something where I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to see more of this guy. Nobody does. Nobody does. I don't even think his own family wants to see more of him. <laughs> they, they changed their number. <laughs> they blocked them. Um, I, uh, I think it's a, it's a horse that we beat in the death, I think, at this point. Um, yeah. I mean, just here we go on paper. The guy who has done nothing all year now gets a cheap win. With a, you know, using obviously a a uh, shalali, uh, and you know, we get we, we, they get rewarded, <laughs> right? Right? It, like, wouldn't logic dictate to say, okay, he gets this win, right? But everyone in the building, everyone backstage, the New Japan Pro Wrestling brass, uh, they all saw it, right? So instead of giving them a match right, and allowing them to to partake, uh, be like, well, you know, you won, but eh, it was under dubious uh, circumstances, so uh, we're not going to give you that, <laughs> right? One that be, or how about this? He had a big mallet, Damon. You're forgetting oh, the mallet. Oh my goodness gracious! I well, wasn't sure. Like, but this is a, a very like sort of '90s UK Kids TV reference. There's this guy called Timmy Mallet who had a big mallet. So I don't know if, and he had a president of a program, Kids TV program called Whackaday. So I just I, the, the big question for me is: Do we refer to Finley as Finny Mallet or Whackaday? So those are the only two questions in mind. Whackaday, Whack-a-dave yeah. I love Whackaday. Yep, Whackaday. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Where we're at. Let's talk about something good. Let's go to the sixth match. Uh, Great O'Conn, John Moxley. So that it was a one minute, seven second count out draw. Then they had a a rematch, Falls Count Anywhere match, where Mox defeated O'Conn, 14 minutes, 10 seconds while a referee stoppage. This was fucking awesome. This was really good shit. This very much exceeded my expectations. And I think a lot of that is down to Mox, who just seems to do whatever the fuck he wants. Um, I think maybe a touch overrated in some circles, but. He absolutely delivered here. You can tell the reverence that he has for working New Japan. And he looks like he's enjoying working New Japan more than he is enjoying working AEW. And so I am very happy the fact that he's got the creative freedom to do what he wants and do nutty stuff like this. And um, I don't want to say dragged Okan to a really great match because I know Okan's got it in him, but maybe sort of inspired him into you know putting in that effort and doing something a bit special because yeah there was just a real energy about this match and just a, some really creative wacky spots it was just an absolute blast to watch yeah what made it great what made it great what made it great was once again the dreaded a word authenticity how about that right it felt like they wanted to kill each other. Like there were times 
where they're beating the living shit out of each other with guardrails and chairs and what have you. And and, and not, not each other in the cock. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. Right. There was an actual bite of the cock. Right. right. That doesn't scream legitimacy. I don't know what does. Um, I mean, people running for their lives, them not giving a shit who was in the way. I mean, I, I'm not the biggest fan of that. Right. Um, you know, I could deal, deal without it, do without it. Here, here, I'm I'm totally fine with it. And again, the, it, it built in the sense of they went what again? You said like it was like two minutes, four minutes, whatever it was, and then they get counted out. And you could hear the groan from the crowd, like it, they were just like, "Oh, the fuck? Are you kidding me?" Uh, and then you know they said, "Okay, no nope, false count anywhere. Let's restart it." And you should have heard that fucking pop. Like they were like, "Wow, oh, right, let's fucking go!" And they went, and they beat the shit out of each other. And oh my god, the one where Ocon wrapped up Moxley in the tarp, and you know, pounded the shit out of him. Referees in there trying to, you know, get in the way. And Moxley gets up, and there is a puddle, <laughs> an actual pool of blood in that tarp. And I was like, "What?" Now? Wowzers! Fucking just gorged himself. Um, gorged, gored. He cut himself badly. Um, yeah. This felt. I mean, look. You know, I don't want to say you know what you get with a John Moxley match, but okay, you could say the same thing. You know what you're going to get with a fucking Bruiser Brody match, and you know what you're going to get with a fucking Abdul the Butcher match, and you know what you're going to get with whatever. You know what I mean? Like, okay, if that's what it is, then be damn good at it. And I feel like he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's good at that. Um, and there is something to be said about a dude who just doesn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Doesn't give a shit. Like, to me, that that I don't give a shit is, is a thousand times better than the announcing team uh, making a point to say, well, fans might shit on David Finley, but he sure doesn't care. <laughs> okay. All right. Right. Uh Uh-huh. Gotcha. Uh, uh, Maybe he should a little bit. But Mox and Okan, yeah, no, they they tore the house down, both uh, in a uh, figurative and literal sense. I'm watching an extremely funny game of football at the moment. watching uh, Tottenham against Chelsea. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Tottenham have had two players sent off, but they are playing – they're all basically like standing – in a line on the halfway line, <laughs> Chelsea keep like peeing the ball over the top and running in behind <laughs> their <laughs> defense, and they're four one down at the moment. This is absolute mayhem. Oh dear, I just uh, find some cards? joy out of uh, Tottenham losing. Yeah, yeah, two red cards. Dirty they players. They go down beaten run. Ah, fuck you, Spurs. Uh, all right, uh, Louis says with the Moxie versus a car match becoming false count anywhere where some people in the crowd are willing participants in the match for statement ever involved in a match just by being in the audience. I know you guys mm. saw Izuka made his way past when you were seated. Yeah. Uh, and Amelia says, is it time for a new ponytail list? Great Okan rebranding. Is it time, David? Is Great Okan going on a run? <coughs> oh, wow. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think there's no. I mean, why start now? No, who's hand picked for this match because Mox thought it would be funny? I, I tell That's you it. what, I'm I'm hoping that I'm I hope that there was a conversation about that. I would be pissed off. If somebody fucking did that. Um, I you know I I would. Who knows? I mean, I mean, he still has a lot left. <laughs> I can't believe we're sitting here talking about a ponytail, but yeah. Uh, I mean, he still has a little bit left. I mean, it's not that, you know, he's not like a bald head geek. Um, I hate crowd brawling shit. I hate, I hate having to get up, get my shit, you know, fucking get, stay out of the way. And then, then you got the, <laughs> I, I, I love the when they were trying to have that sort of artsy camera shot of them brawling in the background oh, and yeah. Greta Khan's Still. ponytail lying in the foreground, but there was a bottle of green tea next to it. So it just <laughs> looked like really awkward product placement. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know they should have had like a, like a Zemo or something or uh, somebody plop one down. Uh, yeah. Well, 
I don't know. I, I, I can't see it happening. I mean, I think, I think what great Ocon is, is mid card guy. He's a mid card guy. I mean, that's, and, and to me, there's really no indication that that's going to change anytime soon. And that's, it is what it is. Do I agree with it? Nope. Uh, you, you can see what he has, you know, you could see the fire that he has if given that opportunity. So no, I don't think that there's any, uh, I'm not, I wouldn't hold my breath for that. Uh, for the crowd stuff, again, I don't particularly like it when I'm in the crowd. Um, I, I will say this. Um, if you go back into the old, the archives of uh, ECW, you will see uh, there was a time, I think it was, a, I want to say it was the, it was Axel against Ian Rotten. It wasn't that Taipei glass match. I was there, but it wasn't that match. Uh, it was a different match. And he DDT'd, one of them DDT'd the other into the fucking chair that I was sitting in. And uh, the camera was right on us. And I'm, I, was, I was acting like a fool. So like, he had his head right here in the big dent in the fucking chair. And it's on the TV. It's on the, uh, it's on the show. It's uh, actually at the end of the show. <laughs> they, they cut to me <laughs> screaming about how he broke the fucking chair. Uh, I couldn't tell you what episode it was, but early ECW, early ECW. So that was probably the biggest one. But there have been plenty of times, like Joel Goodhart shows and shit, with a brawn in the crowd, and you're just like, oh, just ex- you know, I, I, I don't know. I never really got into it. Never really got into the 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 brawl through the crowd shit. I, in fact, I actively am not a fan of it. Right, seventh match then was the Never Open Weight Six Man Tag Team Championships with Kazuchika Okada, Tomohiro Ishii, and Hiroshi Tanahashi successfully defending and retaining the Never Open Weight titles against Zack Sabre Jr., Shane Haste, and Mikey Nichols. And it was Hiroshi Tanahashi who got the win over ZSJ, apparently, mm. <laughs> by necklock. Uh, I thought this match was really great, just tremendous back and forth, great action. Uh, the one part that had me cringing a little bit was when Zach and Ishii did that extended, horribly over-choreographed sequence where they're just like whiffing at each other. Um, th- come on, but both of you are better than that. Don't do that again. That's embarrassing. <laughs> You're going to get memed on Twitter for that. It's, it's unworthy of you. And then um, Daniel Bro- no, Dr. Brian Danielson made the challenge afterwards. Video challenge. Uh, couldn't fly, apparently, because of the injury. Said he wants to break Okada's arm. Uh, oh. I did enjoy the, Jap- the, uh, the, the Japanese audience and Okada doing the yes, yes reference for the show. They pay absolutely no attention to AW programming. They're still referring to the WWE gimmick. What what happened to the Okada who wanted to beat up all the kids? It's a, someone said, I think it's Fraser said on the Discord, like it, the, this it just feels like a real sort of jarring difference between the booking in the first half of the year and the second half of the year. But anyway, yeah. I'm not to get that. Um, what did you think of this never open weight six man match? Um, I thought it was I thought it was good. Um, for some reason, I thought maybe it would be a little bit better than than what we got. Uh, but that's not to say that it was horrible. Um, I think what I was most weirded out by, and it wasn't that much, but um, was the idea of them successfully defending, knowing full well that Okada is going to be wrestling uh, Daniel Bryan. Um, Daniel Bryanson, Danielson, whatever the fuck he's called this week. I'm going to refer to him as American Dragon. Uh, I thought that was weird because unless they drop those titles before Wrestle Kingdom, which again, we'd have two months, is a possibility. Um, it felt weird to not have them even be defended on the show. I thought, I thought it was kind of. Like, all right, they're probably going to move these belts off of them just to free them up. Um, I mean, I yes, I do, and I do realize that Zach is the prestigious TV title holder um, on the new and improved. Have, when is that? Is that like tomorrow? That's tomorrow, isn't it? The new and improved New yeah. Japan world. I can't yeah. wait to see how that fucking goes. If it's anything like anything else in this fucking company, 
it's going to crash. <laughs> it's going to crash. Um, <laughs> but fingers crossed. Uh, but no, I was actually surprised that, that uh, they got the win. And I don't know. It kind of feels like that setting up a Tanahashi TV title, right? Oh, man. Go ahead. The, 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 title that, the title that was for the youngsters, yeah? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Still, Listen, Tanahashi and Zach, a nice, nice fresh match up there. Yeah, uh, yeah, something we haven't seen before either. Um, look, we, you, you've said it before. They come up with ideas and they just fucking, they just, I don't know, they just forget them. It's weird how they, they are like that in some cases, and then, then like in other cases, they're just, they're gonna, they're, they're sticking with it. They're sticking with their guns and they're pushing through and pushing through. <laughs> just. This was the title for the kids. Oh, well. 11, 11 times they faced each other, Tanahashi and Zach. So forgive me for not uh, wetting myself in excitement for that. Uh, anyway, let's move on. The uh, eighth match was the. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't ask your thoughts. Um, Okada Danielson. Um, I think the match is cursed, to be quite honest with you. Uh, I don't know how a guy with. And it's an orbital bone, right? Broken orbital bone. Um, I mean, that doesn't heal overnight. And I just think about the impact of just simple bumps and simple slams. And, you know, I don't know. I don't, I just, to me, the juice is not worth the squeeze here. And again, they're, they're trained professionals and hopefully doctors are involved and, but pro wrestlers will say whatever they can to fucking get that payday. Um, I I wish cooler heads would step in, but there's money to be made, Joel. So why would we do that? Um, I don't know. I just think I I think of an injury like that, and I just think that that doesn't heal in two months. You know, I just I don't know, man. Just. And and now and and add every other injury on top of that that he has had, plus the fucking concussions. Uh, like, is the is it really that important this match for him? Like, really? Like, you're willing? Like, there was a point in time where it was like, okay, it's so awesome. Doctors cleared him. Whew, okay, let's go. And and the world was on fucking edge for his return. And and now he gets a new lease on life at AEW, and everybody's pretty excited about with the possibilities. And here we go. I don't know, man. I I think I'm at the I'm at the end of the rope with the 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 the, the D bry the D bry. Uh, it's like again, a I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. I'm telling you flat out, I would rather see Kenny Omega in there against Okada <laughs> because. I want, I want Kenny and the Bucks challenging for these six man titles. I would take that. I think that'd be that. That would be. I think that match would be tremendous, tremendous. Um, and 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 this is a this is us saying that knowing full well that we would take a singles match any day of the week. We would. We want that thirty minute classic. Like we're we're those guys. Absolutely. I would. I would absolutely take this the six man over. Uh, Okada and um, you know Debray in a singles match. Um, I just I'm not a worry wart. They're they're adults. They can do what the fuck they want. I'm not going to give a shit either way. But if you're asking my honest opinion, there's no fucking way that guy should be stepping foot in the ring. No fucking way. Okay, then we got the eighth match, the Super Junior Tag League Final with. Catch two two TJP and Francesco Akira defeating Sho and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. So TJP pinned Kanemaru after sixteen minutes forty seconds, following the the two two the knee knee as they call it. And so Catch two two won the Super Junior Tag League, right decision. Um, you know they can do their redemption arc. I think they have probably been the best tag team in New Japan this year yep. and deserve this. The match was pretty good. I mean, it would have been way better having Despo Watto in the final uh, and doing all this stuff in the semi-final, but it was kind of satisfying to have all the run-ins thwarted by all the uh, members of United Empire coming out and foiling that and people getting carried off. Um, what did we get? We got uh, Oleg Bolting carrying Dick Togo. Yeah. 
backstage and Jeff Cobb carrying off. Well, that was quite amusing. It was fine. But yeah. uh, as satisfying as that was narratively, I just I would have preferred just to see an extremely high quality uh, junior tag team match. That's what I think your tournament final should be. However, uh, I am. I think the Wrestle Kingdom match that is now booked, which is Catch 2 2 against the War Dogs. Probably the match I'm most <laughs> looking forward to on the entire mm-hmm. Wrestle Kingdom card, wow. um, and yeah. I don't like to say that, but I do not. I'm, I'm really excited, but you know that's not an indictment upon those guys. Uh, funnily enough, the first Wrestle Kingdom Junior Tag Title match with no Japanese wrestlers in it since Wrestle Kingdom 11, Ooh. which was uh, Rapongi Vice against the Young Bucks. But um, I'll, I'll celebrate this as a win. Really looking forward to that Wrestle Kingdom match. Well, what if I were to tell you? <laughs> I have suspicions that that will remain a two-on-two matchup. I would not be surprised if we find... They've already announced it. It doesn't matter. You think that matters? Yeah, I, I think okay. once they've announced it, it's, it's rare. I don't. I can't think of any examples where it's been announced and they've done the graphics and everything and then gone and changed it. I think if they were going to change it, the opportunity was there in match two for one of the other tag teams to pin the war dogs and be like, oh, you know, we pinned you and insert themselves into the match, but they didn't. So I, I strongly think it's just going to be two on two. All right, I hope so. But there's a big fucking roster. I'm just saying <laughs> there's a lot of people. It's going to need to, to find a place. Be, I, look, it hasn't happened. And you're right. The graphics have been made and all that fun stuff. I don't know. I just, I got a, I got a weird feeling. We're going to see another team involved. Again, no pastrami sandwich there. This is just me speculating. Um, okay, then. So, ninth match then was IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Hiromu Takahashi getting his seventh defense against Taiji Ishimori. 20 minutes, 38 seconds with the nameless Hiromu roll part two. I don't have a great deal to say about this. I mean, it was really good. Uh, not their best match that they've had, but I just think they've got really good chemistry. So the the floor on their encounters is is pretty damn high. So I'd say firmly in the middle amongst the matches they've had. Uh, but yeah, just fine. Absolutely fine. Um, uh, I suppose the mo- more notable thing is that Hiromu selected El Desperado as his challenger for Wrestle Kingdom, which yeah. was uh, a bit of a surprise. Um, that they're going back to this one, but it's the first time they will have faced each other in front of a cheering crowd since June 2018. And I've, I've been saying on this pod for quite a while that I think it is a match that they wanted to go back to in front of a cheering crowd, and now they're doing it. Uh, look, I'm, I'm enjoying the Hiron Moraine. I think it's been really high quality, but he is sort of just cycling through the pandemic roster of juniors, you know, guys that he has faced many times before. I would like to see him working with younger talent, and I want to see him in singles matches with guys like, you know, Kevin Knight and Francesco Akira and, and Fujita, Mike Bailey. Yeah. And it just seems like he's just wrestling all the guys that he wrestled countless times before. Um, now the Hiromu Despi match during the pandemic, what was it? The super juniors finding 2020, I want to say was unbelievable. Like one of my f- the f- favorite matches I've ever seen. So it would be churlish of me to, to scoff at, at this one, but, I don't know, it's not, again, it's not the most inspired matchmaking, is it? Especially with, as much as I love Despi, you know, he's got to undergo surgery, like, I hate to be a negative Nancy, but it's, match will be great. Match will be be great. great. Look, if if I have any, uh, you know, I have no doubts that, that the match will be great. And again, they'll give them time. And you're right, in front of a nice, rowdy crowd, Perfect. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I, I don't think I had any problem with it. Really, I, I, I'm. I think that's from a junior perspective. While it would be nice for fresh matchups, that's the money match for juniors. You know, like if you're going to put on a marquee junior heavyweight title match in the dome, I kind of think you got to go Despy. You kind of gotta. Um, and, and they've intentionally kept them apart. It felt like just, just to get to this point. So I'm okay with it. And again, with the idea of it being, uh, not the freshest of matchups, but a matchup that I think that we can all count on being great. 
Um, and I think it, I think the card as it stands desperately needs that. And um, I think they'll deliver in spades. That brings us on to the main event, which was the IWGP US UK Heavyweight Championship match with Will Ospreay successfully defending against Shota Umino. Uh, it says match time 4,016 seconds. Yep. Uh, yeah, four, that's how that I counted it. I counted them each second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to do the maths here, so uh, forgive me. That would be... 16. <laughs> one hour and seven minutes long. You got it. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't that long. Felt God, like it was that God, long. I, 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 oh, the, the youth of England right now, boy, are they in? <laughs> get all, get all, <laughs> get all, math wizard Joe, <laughs> Joe pounding up the math. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Give me, give me your take. I'm going to give you the floor. The mic is yours. This was fucking great. Yeah. This was just everything that I love about New Japan. I can't believe it was 40 minutes long because they just they had me from bell to bell. There was no downtime there was no filler it was just like a celebration of both wrestlers really I was going to say mainly Shota and just the growth that he's shown over the last 12 months and I think there's no doubters anymore no one no one can be out on the street saying oh I don't know if this guy's got it has he got that dog in him he has got everything he has all the tools to be the top guy in this company and I've known that since the G1 to me, he proved it in the G1, and now he's gone out there and delivered an honest-to-God match of the year candidate, and this is not an Osprey carry job. I mean, Osprey absolutely played his role, and we can continue to throw flowers at him for the way he manages to make his opponents look great, but I thought Shota more than held up his end of the bargain here. He just had that the charisma and the confidence and the, you know, the storytelling of the match and the sort of the, the overcoming the struggle there were the moments where he was sort of like, I don't know, challenging Ibushi, you know, the murder Ibushi little moments where he's no sound of the slaps and the blood's trickling down his nose and he's wiping the blood on his chest and throwing tables at Osprey. But just everything looks crisper and sharper and more dangerous with Shota, like his his forearms and that DDT that he did over the ropes. Oh, my God. Where he, yeah. Osprey landed on his noggin on the apron and uh, the, the shit talking, the swagger, he's just looks like a a transformed guy and seeing him have that range, like being able to be, you know, high-fiving the kids and giving out little toys and everyone's clean cut baby face hero to having those extra gears he can go to where he can show that, you know, that sandpaper, as you like to say, that grit is, was just an absolute joy to watch. And I was on the edge of my seat. I was living and dying by every near fall, Maybe we went on a little bit too much, like got a bit excessive at the end with the near holes, but they got me, man. Like that, there was a moment where I think Osprey was going for the storm driver and Shota counted it into like a Frankensteiner. And I was just, I was losing my shit. Just the, just the intricacy and the execution of those sequences was phenomenal. And it broke my heart, Damon. Yeah. I was so upset when Shota didn't win because I was just like, yes, this is it. This is his crowning moment. He's going to be a superstar after this. And then he lost, and I was really sad. I don't think anyone can can sit here with a straight face and say that he's not ready to be top of the card. Like I don't know, I don't know what what other what proof, what what else you need, what uh, what would sway you to now think that. He, you know, he doesn't have something, and he needs this little component to be a top guy. He's a fucking top guy, and he's young, and he doesn't have a lot of mileage on him yet. And yep, and it, and it might be a case of, hey, you know what? He's the new shiny thing. Um, and I think people can, that there, people are somewhat gun shy of committing themselves. Because uh, God forbid they should get something wrong, you know. God forbid that this guy should fall on his fucking face and not be who we want him to be. Uh, at this match, should have, and if it hasn't, then there's something seriously wrong. It should have removed all doubts, right? And I and I and 
to me, that was the end goal, right? That was the end goal. That being said, um, I don't know of another opportunity where you're going to have a guy who is a a wrestler of the year type pro wrestler who, you know, again, is by all estimations is leaving come January 6th and not. No, it's not January 6th. It's February, isn't it? Is it? Well, I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I mean, that's an important caveat. Maybe there is a little bit more time for that passing of the torch than Wrestle Kingdom. Okay. I mean, yes, but to me, Wrestle Kingdom's your biggest fucking show of the year, right? and you've already occupied that guy who has the most to give when it comes to um, putting somebody over. Um, and it's, and I, when's that opportunity going to be, right? Because truth be told, the year that um, Will Ospreay's having, I think. I mean, w- let me ask you this: What would mean more, a win over Will Ospreay, or maybe a win in? Mo- and again, I'm just throwing in a, a month out: a win in March against Okada. Yeah, you know I mean. I mean? You- you make a compelling point there, but I'm just thinking like, is there a scenario? Is there someone that he could, let's say he retains at Wrestle Kingdom. Is there someone he could lose to in a singles match at, let's say new beginning where we will look back and we go, Oh yeah, no, they were right. It was good that they waited. That was the right decision. Cause I can't think of anyone who he hasn't already wrestled recently that I would think, yeah, this, this is a guy who needs to hand it over to Right. That's my point. Like, maybe you could have said Okada, but I just think Okada's in a different spot right now. Um, getting a win over Okada would, is still, I think, means a ton. I don't know. I just I think you have a guy where it's, you know, tailor made for him to put him over. Um, so that was, I guess, my only disappointment in the match in the sense and again we'll we'll talk about post match don't get me wrong um that was my only just mm, i just don't understand why that wasn't done um i i don't have an answer i here's the thing i liked the idea of mox showing up at ringside and saying don't you fucking give up you're not giving up um this match and 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 i will give will osprey credit here too um, he did everything he possibly could have, aside from taking a three count. Um, uh, in front of a crowd that were cheering for him. Yeah. And by the end, collectively, they managed to get people cheering for Shota. Yeah. I mean, he did everything in his fucking power. Um, so this is not, this is certainly not a knock on Will Ospreay at all. Um, but once again, I just, I just don't know of anybody who has that much power oomph um that's you know that's not going to be here in 2024 um i don't know when- do, do you think there was value in this narrative okay so the narrative going into the match was osprey that amazing promo cut saying that he doesn't trust shows he doesn't trust the people that he's going to leave behind with the responsibility of carrying the company but now afterwards even though shows didn't win He's earned Shota's respect. You know, they did the bowing to each other at the end, that yeah. sort of mutual show of respect. Do you, you think that Shota gained enough from this match in defeat for it to be a success for you? Yes, for three minutes. Because the problem is, is that the last thing you remember from that fucking match is not the match and not that that symbolic, somewhat, I trust you with the company moment. That was, yeah, and also what show to doing at Wrestle Kingdom? What's he doing at your biggest show of the year? <laughs> right. So, so now we had that moment, and it was there. And if we left it at that, I think people would still be feeling the after effects of it. You know what I mean? Like, I think people would still be like, "Okay, he's a guy. He came within a fucking ass hair of winning." Unfortunately, that's not what people remember. People are talking about the angle. 
and the and and where we are and and the fact that he that three minute span of what we were trying to accomplish feels wasted and it feels for naught because again it was three fucking minutes long and to me that moment if we're serious about turning this guy into a star to me that moment means it, it warrants longer than that like where was he where was he during this whole fucking beat down moment with Finley and, and Mox where was he he was nowhere to be found <laughs> what did he do drag him to the back was he getting a hot dog beer taking a piss where, where was he it was nowhere the biggest career defining moment for him and a transitional moment for the company, three minutes. Chew on that. You mean to tell me this fucking company is not lost? Three minutes. Uh, some questions here. So Daryl says, I know Joel was all about show to winning yesterday. Give Will his fucking props. He made both Shota and Suji look like a million bucks and elevated them to legitimate star status in anyone's eyes in the last month. That's more legitimate than a simple US-UK title run. Multiverse Ace says, after that performance, how confident do you feel in Shota becoming the ace? Also, what is the big victory he is now chasing? Mox? That match with Will felt like it could have been that win and seemingly going with Finley instead is certainly a choice. And William says, odds on Ren Shota winning World Tag League and Shota getting a belt at Wrestle Kingdom. Completely missed the opportunity. Whenever he does get the big win, it won't be in a match as fantastic as that. So, yeah, I mean, World Tag League for Shota is, I mean, fine. I, I, I'll enjoy it if it happens. But, and I know this is classic New Japan booking that they're going to make you wait and wait and f- frothing at the mouth for Shota to get that big win, whether it's, the secondary title or world title, whatever it is. But again, as I've said, I don't think they have the luxury to be dragging their feet with these guys when everything else going on on the card is pretty stale. I mean, again, this was supposed to be that moment. That was that was the reason why this match went as long as it did. That is the reason why both guys, you know, practically killed themselves trying to fucking have a great match um, and a memorable match. What, 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 what does it mean? Where are we at? Give me and 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 whoever said that was a thousand percent right. Like, give me a give me the opponent where he can have that type of match and have that moment. You know, there's there's only a few guys on that roster that's that a has the star power, the oomph, the the buzz, and the talent to be able to do that. Who else? When it was a perfect moment, and in three minutes, they flushed the fucking toilet on it. Yeah, so I suppose we better cover uh, Finney Mallet and his uh, Wackadave adventures. So he smashed up the titles. Uh, I mean, what did you think of that angle in isolation? Um, again, I joked to you, I think it was. Uh, Commit assault and battery with a deadly weapon. <laughs> Get elevated to semi-main event at Russell Kingdom. <laughs> it just makes no fucking sense. Um, in isolation, I, I think it's a cool visual of him smashing up the titles and his rationale behind it. The promo was too rambling, went on too long. You can't do promos like that in front of a whispery a crowd. I don't think serious, he's all serious. With the mic. <laughs> yeah. Serious. I'm serious. Um, I'm serious. Carol uh, says, "Where the fuck did Ghetto get that giant hammer? What other comically <laughs> oversized objects would you like to see used in professional <laughs> wrestling?" Uh, I, I mean, we we talked about it last week on the pod, David. That I laid out the case for both um, Mox to be challenging Osprey for that belt, or Finley to be challenging for the belt. Not in my wildest dreams did I think they were going to go with both. They somehow managed to make 
a worse <laughs> third option there. Um, so we have a lot of questions about this. Troy says, does New Japan need a Rebel? Does the world need a Rebel? Gig says, would you guys take this trade? AW gets David Finlay and in return, New Japan gets Bag of Magic Beans. <laughs> Andrew says, in your most pessimistic fantasy booking for Wrestle Kingdom, could you have come up with a worse final Wrestle Kingdom match for Will Ospreay as a contracted New Japan wrestler than a three-way with an AEW guy and David fucking Finlay? Boo said, what did we do as a collective to have suffered through summer struggle only to get this shitty three-way at Wrestle Kingdom. Ollie says, are you looking forward to David Finley telling us he'd beat Osprey and Mox in the same night in every promo until he retires? Uh, Daryl says, um, the angle after the main event was the shits. I have zero interest in that three-way match and I love Osprey and Mox. Does Finley have go-away heat between him and House of Torture? That's a big part of the show I couldn't give a care for. Is there any outcome to this three-way match that you would think, oh, okay, yep, yeah, now it makes sense. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there is, but I don't think anybody gives a fuck, right? I mean, I think the biggest challenge that we have right now, Joel, is that that's just a handful of the responses that we've gotten. Um, And I just think that a lot of people, and those are the people that at least give a fuck enough to get their thumbs up, 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 up typing uh, and send us a message. There's a lot of people that don't even have the energy for that when it comes to this fucking company. They just, it's hand waveable. Um, it's, it's, it's a huge problem. Um, I, I, not in my wildest dreams, what I, and, and yep, exactly right. In the sense of big time, wrestle kingdom, Tokyo dome, will Osprey, <laughs> Uh, and again, Mox works as hard as he fucking can, uh, but you know it's just a weird style conflict. I would think it doesn't really like like if I'm putting Will Osprey in a match, uh, the two people that they're going in the ring with might be some of the uh, bottom of the list people that I would put in that. Um, this is a problem. I can't see a good outcome here because we're going to be we're going to be mad if Mox or Osprey win. Mm -hmm. The reasons we've talked about before, you know, Osprey not putting over a New Japan guy in his last Wrestle Kingdom as a, a New Japan contracted wrestler. All oh, the titles been taken by an AEW guy. All oh, the titles been put on ice for then other load of months. Blah blah blah. But would it be any better if you know they do the classic Amoresu three way nonsense finish of Osprey? Hitting the storm driver on Mox, and then Finley pushes him out of the ring and steals the pin, and ah ha ha, he outsmarted everyone. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's any better. No. I mean, I, I suppose maybe marginally because I, I guess I, I would like the guy who works for New Japan to have the title, but there's just nothing in this match that's not going to make me annoyed. You know, I'm just like, I've got my tinfoil hat on. I'm like, what is going on here? Is, is Finley there because um, Tony Khan didn't want to burn the Osprey Mox singles match or he didn't want Osprey or Mox taking a pin. It's just like my mind is like buzzing with all these conspiracy theories and, and yeah. it doesn't feel good. No, it, it really doesn't. And I think all of them can be legitimate thoughts. Um, uh, and I'll add to that thought. You got Ghetto, who is – he's trying to make this fucking thing work where, where, whatever way he can, and he just dry humps fucking David Finley into this three-way match. And it's like, okay, uh, wh why? Is, why? Because he came into a ring and hit two people with a fucking shillelagh. That's the reason. I don't think people – People don't want this. <laughs> um, and it's not like we haven't said this for a while now, but it's shit like this that turn people off. It's shit like this that turn people off. Um, and again, this is these are the people that those comments, those are the people that care enough to at least engage with us to voice their concerns. There are plenty of people that just don't even care about that like and the fact that they can't recognize that and they can't see that and they can't pivot is crazy like it's so preposterous that yeah it does make you your head spin a little bit with pro wrestling cons conspiracy theories of 
there has to be a reason why this is happening because no one, no sane person would be like, yep, this is our semi main event. <laughs> here's, here's who I would put in the ring with uh, Will Ospreay. This is our money match. I guarantee you. I promise you this. I would bet the house on this. Do you think that they would have half as many tickets sold if they announced this show in advance? I don't know. That's the one thing I can't make any sense of is the ticket sales doing so well. Right. And a part of me is just inclined to say that now we know we've got cheering crowds in advance and the travel's opening up. Um, that is more of a factor than any of these matches being a particularly hot ticket. Naito, I think people want to see Naito win. I think that's probably doing a lot of the heavy lifting. There's probably some interest in Okada Danielson. I mean, there was a bit of a spike in ticket sales after the show, and I can't imagine it's due to uh, Wacker Dave. So, yeah, I, I, I'm struggling to make sense of it, really. I think we all are. I mean, look, we do this. And I show. don't care at the end of the day. Like, I t- that's I the problem. Use your fans to be good. I don't want to grade it on that curve of ticket sales, as I've said. There is no satisfying narrative reason why that three way match is taking place. Right. And the only thing people can kind of at least comfort their head in is the thought that, okay, there's got to be some backstage politicking going on. Because, again, why? W- w- it makes zero sense to, to present this. Uh, as they did uh, with the people that are involved. It just makes no fucking sense. And to, to what, like, listen, you, you, you feed uh, all of it. You know, you, you get all the, the, the social media on the account. It's you, you get it. Is there one person that's like, Hey, you know what? This is really good. I'm really digging this. (laughs) No. no, you've heard all the questions I've read out, and these are for loyal listeners and viewers who have been who have given this stuff a chance. You know, we gave all of it a chance. We gave Sonata a chance. We gave Finley, Finley a chance. chance. Yep. We gave Tamba Tonga a chance. From day one, when these guys are getting these pushes, we've and all, all these people that have written in have embraced it for the most part in good faith with an open mind, given it a chance. It's not working. Right, so this is, uh, and again, to answer your question, no, no one is saying that this is good. I've not seen a single person say, "Yeah, actually, I'm into this three way. This is going to be cool." Right? Nobody, no one. And I look at like comments, and we're like, the freaks. We're the freaks, yeah. and no one likes this. Who is it yeah. for? Who's it Tony for? Khan? Is is that it? Is that who it's for? Jesus. Yeah. Right. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I mean, you hear that, people. You hear, you hear that? That's the sound of a guy. Listen, I'm known to fucking be the, you know, I'll go off on whatever tangent. I'll call somebody a fucking hunk of shit. Who cares? When Joel, when you can hear that in Joel's voice of, what am I doing? Like, what am I watching? Why am I forcing myself to fucking enjoy this shit? It's fucking shit. I'm tired of it. And the thing that fucking gets me going the most is that it's not like they didn't have a fucking world of time to figure it out. And this, this is what they came up with. And it's like, it's even more frustrating when we can see the talent that they've got. We've seen yeah. Suji and... Umino, and even Gabe Kidd, like, and, and I know the use it, they'll get there eventually, but they're awesome, they're cool, they should be front and centre in the Wrestle Kingdom booking. Like, how do you label these guys your musketeers? And it's November, and they've got jack shit for the biggest show of the year. I'm sorry, this I, ticket sales aside, this Wrestle Kingdom card is a fucking mess. And, yeah. you know, if the rationale is it's a transitional year, fine, you know, I'll hold my nose, we'll get through January 4th, but I just, I don't trust the booking anymore. And I'm not even saying guys like Suji and Shota should be world champion now. Although I am saying that they should be. But can they at least win some fucking wrestling matches? Yeah. You know? What are we waiting for? What else do they need to develop? They've got everything. Why 
are we using the best wrestler in the world or possibly the last time we worked the biggest show of the year in a three-way with an AEW guy and a fat guy? Why can't we get this historic Roman Reigns to showcase some young talent instead of working through the pandemic roster of juniors that he's wrestled a million times already? Uh, you know, it pains me to say it, Damon. I don't want to be a doomer. I'm not going to judge this company on a skewed Amores curve because, yes, it's fucking light years ahead of WWE and AEW and all that shit, but it should be better than this, right? We're sitting on this gold mine of talent. Like, I genuinely believe there's enough quality there to have us a new golden era. And they're all just sitting around with their fingers like their asses with nothing on the docket for, for Wrestle Kingdom. And at the same time, I'm being subjected to Sanada Tokyo domain events, which is, I'm sorry, it's preposterous. I'm not going to be convinced otherwise. We've got Tony Khan off for matches. We've got guys who we don't even know if we're going to be healthy in time. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm totally with you. And, and not to top that off, a new title, which is just what everyone wanted. Oh. And we we got some questions about that. Yeah. Um, Daryl says one more about the IC title. It was last held by the dear sweet Ibushi. Do you think he still has it? If the plans are to resurrect it, will Obari have to knock on his door and ask for it back? Like asking your ex girlfriend for your favorite hoodie. Please role play <laughs> this scenario. Uh, Dakota says any predictions about what the new title will be? Morning Progress says if this chaotic company isn't actually calling the new belt the Intercontinental title like they should, then what would be a good name for it? And then what bad name will they actually call it? Brian says, what will the new title be named? Uh, if it's up to Super Jcast to name it. And Antonio is weighing in. As of this comment, still haven't checked the project, but I'm still going to ask which is with IWGP Intercontinental belt. May I say may, because we don't, if it will or not return, is there a chance we're going to see IWGP heavyweight belt again officially, or the belt will be officially done and dusted. I mean, is 0.5% chance we're going to get belt or not? I mean, um, blah, 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 blah. But wishes may say, yes, for, for IC belt is going to happen. That is my question. Uh, and Jason, to come up with quite possibly the most offensive suggestion in this entire show, since Chris Jericho said AEW is looking for a Japanese expansion, what if this new belt is an AEW oh Asian my God. title? Oh, my God. Wow. I think I just threw up my mouth. <laughs> if you stare into the abyss long enough, the abyss stares back. Uh, let me be very clear. I'll put out a... Uh, I'll put out the Orange Cassidy. No, it wasn't Orange Cassidy. It was uh, Enzo, right? If Enzo's at the fucking dome, I'm shutting it down. If this title is an AEW title, I'm shutting it down. We're done. You'll never hear from us again. We're going away. We're <laughs> done. You'll never hear our voices again. You'll never know. Jesus, will you will you all transition into a Portuguese football podcast once David Finley wins at Wrestle Kingdom <laughs> and Okada beats Danielson just to leave for AEW a month later? But, yeah, yep. a lot of stuff on the table here where we are, we are ready to pull the plug. Yeah, do it. I fucking dare you, New Japan. Hey, I fucking dare you. Do it. Um. Uh, that is a crazy worst case, and yeah, it, yeah, you know what? It could be worse, and that that there's there's your worst case scenario. Um, I don't think they bring back the Intercontinental, do you? Because here's the thing: oh, no, no, they said they won't. They said okay. it's going to be a new title, but it's not the Intercontinental title. There you go. I mean, because if they did that, li- you're, so if you made that decision, you're basically saying, yeah, it was a fucking terrible decision, <laughs> and nobody wants to nobody wants to be left holding that fucking bag. So, yeah, they're going to name it something else. And it's going to be the Lawson's uh, Family Mart World Title. (laughs) Right? Sponsored. And, uh, yep, yep. We'll get some brand recognition out there. It is the Lawson's Family Mart. No, Lawson, it can't be Family Mart. Family Mart's a different thing. Lawson's... uh, no, you said the family chicky. I Fam- want it oh. sponsored exclusively by Family Mart Chicken. Perfect. The family chicky title. Okay, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Uh, yeah, we'll just uh, we'll just have how about this. We have different. Re- you know, one of the most interesting things in New Japan over the past year was the uh, that Young Lions tournament with the uh, the beef. Right? They got the. Why don't we do this? We switch it up every month. It's a new restaurant, right? New and and uh, the winner is the uh, whatever the whatever restaurant champion, and they get to eat there for free. And oh, how lovely would that be? They'd be champion. 
Wow. Get some name recognition out there. This is a terrible idea, by the way, but it's better than an AEW yes. based on <laughs> It's more coherent <laughs> and well thought out. Than- yeah. <sighs> what are we going to do, dude? Let's- That's that. That was a side. Yeah, we're going of- to preview Lone Star Shootout. That's what. All right. Let's do it. Oh, coming up Friday from Garland, Texas. Okay. Let me ask you a question, yep. Damon. Uh, Fred Rosser mm-hmm. versus Tom Lawler singles match, right? You know, we're aware they've had great history together. Some uh, twice winners of the strong match of the year. Yeah. If you have the book, right? We've got, uh, let's say, 10 matches on this card. Where are you placing Fred Rosser versus Tom Lawler? I would say near the top, wouldn't it? I mean, we're looking at like, I mean, semi main of some kind, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Kickoff match. What? It's a kickoff match. It's not even on the main card. It's not even on the main card. It's not even on the main card. Does somebody have like a flight to catch or something? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Andrew suggested on the Discord that they might be, this, this could be leading to an angle where they're teaming up for World Tag League, which if it is, I'll forgive that because I'd love to see both of these guys in World Tag League. That's but weird, like, why would they do scratch. that though? That doesn't make any sense. Why would they, I mean, like fucking t- Tom Lawler has a whole faction of people that would cut off their th- toe to go to Japan in World Tag right. League. And you're going to pull maybe, an angle for the Maybe fuck? what you suggest, maybe it's like a logistic. Maybe one of them's got somewhere to be. <laughs> right. Or a restaurant booking. <laughs> right, right. They double parked outside. And they get, get their bags and run out the door. That is, that is, wow. I mean, this company never seems to fucking amaze me. It's not even on the main show. I, I mean, hopefully there's an angle that would explain it. If this is just a straight match, dude. Uh, I, I have no answers. I I, 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 I have no answers. Do me a favor. So that's Do me a favor. My, yeah. Tweet Tom Lawler and be like, can can we ask you a serious question? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to message you. It's just be like, Damon and I are, are, are questioning. Why is this a preach? Do you have any idea? Can you help us connect the dots? And our listeners are thousands upon thousands of listeners. Help us connect the dots. When it comes to you and Fred Rosser, not even being on the main fucking show. Any 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 idea what we're missing, Tommy? Tommy L. <sighs> Unbelievable. I can hear your final way. Exactly. I've asked. I've asked him. I've asked him. Good yep. job. Um, all right. So that's kickoff match two. Kickoff match one is a strong survivor match produced by NJPW Academy with Matt Vandergriff versus Barrett Brown. Then moving on to the main card, we got Mascara Dorada, Tiger Mask, and Atlantis against Echicero, Rocky Romero, and Ultimo Guerrero. That one should be really fun. I like that. I always enjoy the um, CMLL offer matches. Then we've got a eight-man tag with Kevin Knight, Kshida, Tangaloa, and Tamatonga against Clark Connors, Gay Kid, Alex Coughlin, and Chase Owens. There's been a bit of um, people huffing the copium that this is going to be the match where we get Chase Owens kicked out of Bullet Club. Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, again, there's been some suspicious that he's going to team up with Tangela for World Tag League. Oh, my God, God, no. It's just, no, it's not. Yeah. Really? All right. I want you to tweet yeah. Chase Owens. <laughs> I might want you to. <laughs> no, I'm not going to tweet Chase Owens. Okay. All right. What else we got? Um, we got Tori, <laughs> Tori Hanno against Joey Janela. Oh, God, yeah. Into that? I mean, here's the thing. Joey Janela will have he, – I, he's sitting right now. In his living room, uh, thinking of cool and fun, inventive spots to do with Toriano, while Yano is sitting in his bar thinking, oh, I got to get on a fucking plane tomorrow. <laughs> right? like, do you think Yano knows who Joey Janela is? Do you think he's thinking, what, the, the penis guy? I thought he, I thought he was a sex <laughs> He's been canceled. Um, I would not be surprised if there was a show that they both worked. I can't think of it right now, <laughs> but you would think that there was, well, yeah, it's not like Toriano's done a ton of U.S. stuff. 
And when he is here, it's usually just the New Japan shit out the door, right? Like, he's never been on, like, AEW, and he's never been, like, he's never done, like, a tour. He's not, like, fucking Kojima. Um, but I think there's a good chance he has a new fucking idea. <laughs> I bet. I bet. <laughs> All right, we've also got the strong openweight tag team championships with the champions Hikaleo and ELP defending against West Coast Wrecking Crew, Jarrell Nelson, Royce Isaacs, which uh, that should be right. I like West Coast Wrecking Crew. I think they already have booking, so I'm not expecting them to be in World Tag League, though. We've got a special singles match, Mystico versus TJP. I love that one. Yeah. That one should be very good. Yep. Strong openweight championship, Eddie Kingston against Satoshi Kojima. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a vibes match. If you're into those vibes, enjoy, but I think... I think I'm done with Eddie Kingston with these uh, New Japan matches, personally. Um, do we think Koji was going to win, though? <sighs> no. No. Because Eddie Kingston can't lose any matches while he's holding the ROH title. No, this is the bigger thing. It's not even the ROH title. Cheers, Tony. Cheers, Tony. It was the ROH title. No, 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 no. Here we go. Was, has Eddie Kingston been on a Wrestle Kingdom card? No. Here's your answer. There's, there's a couple oh, more God. things he's got to check off that fucking laundry oh, list. God, why have we got to do Eddie? Why have I got to live through Eddie Kingston's bucket list? You know he's going to be on that Wrestle Kingdom show, right? Oh, Christ on a bendy bus. <laughs> you, you, right. Um, NJPW World Television Championship, Zach Sabre Jr. defending against Mike Bailey. His 16th defense. Wow. Go, Zach. Um, he's not going to lose that, but that one should be a ton of fun. Yep. Special tag match. We've got John Moxley and Wheeler Utah against David Finley and Kenta. Kenta's back. It's been a while since we've seen him. Mm. We've got IWGP Women's Championship. My Iwatani defending against Stephanie Vaquer, which I'm really looking forward to that. That should be excellent, I think. And then main event. I think it's the main event. Never open weight championship. Shingo Takagi. Defending against Trent Beretta. <sighs> um, that's all right. I mean, that's a, for for short. I say a fairly short turnaround from the last US show. That's okay. Look, don't hate it. He be fun, fun stuff there. I mean, can, Trent can I have a fight code, please? Someone don't make me pay my own money for this. Yeah, yeah. Somebody give me a code. Um, I mean, Trent Beretta was in the mix when he abruptly left to go to AEW. Um like he was you know kind of in that never um US championship kind of mix. I think that was a long time ago though, wasn't it? I mean that was what 2 years ago, 3 years ago, maybe even longer than that. No, it was 2018, I think, wasn't it? Mm. I mean that's I know, I according to my math, that's oh, early 50 years. <laughs> I mean, is Tremperetta the same Tremperetta? Oh, is that even is he Tremperetta? Who Tremperetta is anymore? I've forgotten him. It's been so long. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when him and Chuck Taylor were doing World Tag League and Chuck Taylor kept going mental and attacking people? Yeah, and his remember his his mom. He was talking about his mom. (sighs) That was not a good time to be quit (laughs) on the whole that whole angle thing. I'll tell you what. Give me something to be to be cheerful about, Damon. I can't I can't end the podcast like this. Okay. Um here's here's what I got for you. Arsenal's gonna win the league. We just lost to Newcastle at the weekend. Oh. That was our first league loss of the season. Although we did get absolutely fucked by um incompetent refereeing. Yep. Where the, the referees who fucked us uh spent the the, the few days prior refereeing matches in Saudi Arabia for the Saudi League and then refereeing matches against Newcastle who are owned by the Saudis. Oh. So absolutely nothing dodgy going on there. No, sir. Do you think there was a little... Uh, who paid for the plastic surgery? Is that what you're trying to tell me? <laughs> you oh. may very well think that. I couldn't possibly comment. All right. I don't want you to get... You know, I don't want a knock on your door. Is this Joel? <laughs> <laughs> oh god they're gonna get the bone saws out fuck yeah uh well look i think we have here's 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 what i'll leave you with we have two months we have two months before the bell rings at the tokyo dome that's a long time 
It is a long time. And maybe they have things up their sleeve that will give us a little bit more excitement. Um, right now, it does look grim. Right now, it does look uh, maybe the, the least interesting Wrestle Kingdom show I can remember in a long time. That being said, we have two months. Maybe they, I'm not going to say they pull an audible, but maybe they recognize that okay, we fucked up. Let's make some changes. Let's let's give the people what they want. Um, and you know what? Maybe we don't have to wait too much longer for the, the, the youngsters to get on top of the card. You know, Dash is always a fun show. So um, maybe, maybe that's the beginning. Maybe that's the start of things, right? Um, so yeah, let's let's hold off hope for that. Let's hold off two months to Wrestle Kingdom, so there's time to uh, add a little bit more spice to the mix. And Dash is always an interesting show. Now, I say that with a little bit of a grain of salt because honestly, the past couple of dashes haven't really been that tremendous. They've t- tell me one thing that happened at Dash this year. Yeah. Uh, hmm. You know, I kind of always fall back on like Juice Robinson pinning Goto <laughs> to, get to elevate him. What happened in the last dash? I I have no fucking idea. What was the what happened? Do you have any idea? No, not without looking it up. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, okay. Right. It was it was um Kenny and Okada teaming up. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make the exact same noise. <laughs> All right, listen. We're, let's 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 keep a positive tone. I don't want everybody driving off a cliff, but this is where we are. This is where I am. This is where Joel is. This is where the show is. We're hoping for the best. Have a great week, everyone. <laughs> That's it. That's how we're ending it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, you want to say goodbye? Bye. Hey, everybody. My name is Jesse Collings, and I want to tell you all about my show, The Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast, here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. On the Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast, we do a thorough analysis on the biggest issues and trends within the pro wrestling industry. We talk a lot about pro wrestling media, we talk a lot about fan culture and wrestling's place within general pop culture, and we talk about the broader influences that are shaping the way we discuss and analyze the pro wrestling industry. We've had some of the brightest minds in the pro wrestling intelligentsia on the show, including WrestleNomics host Brandon Thurston, both Rich Krejci and Joe Lanza from the Flagship Wrestling Podcast, Trevor Dame from the Through the Years Podcast, and a whole lot more. This isn't a show for hot takes. It's not a show recapping the latest episode of television. This is a show focusing on the biggest topics in pro wrestling and doing a deep dive on the real stories behind the surface level analysis you might find elsewhere. The Gentleman's Wrestling Podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts, and we'd really appreciate it if you gave us a try. Thanks.